we are ready to begin with air quality. All right, so this is how I begin the six lectures that are six or seven lectures that I teach, one hour lectures on um, air quality. I just want to make sure that the relationship with the students is in place. So I say welcome, but then I also ask them, what am I welcoming, the, welcoming to? A lot of times you see welcome. Even the footmats to most of the homes say welcome. But what is this welcome really? Okay, it's not the welcome which is anywhere. Swagatam, su swagatam. This is welcome to something very specific. So it's a welcome to a place of honor, a place of appreciation, a place of partnership, and not so frequently articulated, this is a place of service. So it's a place of service, and you say place of service is actually a prayer for Mother Earth and life. So the next six lectures on air quality are inside of this space. Okay, It's very important because there'll be times when I will remind you of this. And I tell my students a lot of times that sometimes I will scold them. I'll be angry with them because I honor them. So with that, the relationship gets established and you know, whether it is the work we do in the classroom or whether the assignments that we do, uh, then they begin to get an appreciation of that they're being related to as players, great players, adults, people who are leaders of tomorrow. So it's all inside of a place of honor, a place of appreciation of who they are, a place of partnership with them, and a place of service to humanity. Okay? And one more time, inside of the space that it is a prayer for Mother Earth and life itself. So you, as a teacher, will deliver on the promise. And while millions may never know the work that you put in, you should know that that which you provide serves all of humanity. I'd actually like for you to maybe take a printout of this slide and keep it under your pillow every night so that you can remember who you are and who you are for us. So on behalf of the people of India, on behalf of the people of India, I want to say thank you for who you are, for the commitment that you have taken up. And you should just know that your presence fills us with pride for what we are about to unfold. I'll be quiet for a few seconds. I want that to sink in. OK, so thank you very much. So would you please turn to your partner? If you already know each other, great. If you don't know each other, please introduce yourself. And share at least two things about yourself that you're proud of. OK, very good. So please say thank you to your partners. All right. Now, I'm going to open up for any questions. OK, Shivaji University, Kolhapur, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no questions as such. But the question you asked at the beginning, I would just like to say something about that. The development of context you said, uh, according to me, the very purpose of having this environment studies course to teach that is there should be someone who will teach and there should be someone who will learn about 100 years from now. Wow. So that's uh, the, way, the only worry in mankind is having uh, uh, right now is preserving the natural resources which he has destroyed over the time without caring for it. So now this is the in, in fact right time, if not late, to start doing something, at least create awareness in the students and future generations to stop and uh, reverse the damage done to the uh, planet Earth and the environment. That's what I think. And uh, one more thing I would like to say, now there is uh, enough awareness already about environment studies. The only thing is uh, converting uh, that awareness into action. Excellent. And uh, I'm here just to see, you know, uh, discuss and learn uh, any innovative things and individually what can I do to speed up that trend uh, of awareness into action. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you, sir. Thank you. Very much. So you're right. Actually, we've this is we've been in this business of awareness, especially even even as this course for over a decade now. And I think it's important to take it to the next level. So thank you. And I look forward to your ongoing suggestions and take on a lead role in this aspect, OK?
my question is the first question you asked whether the students will take this course or not. Yes. So I think uh, I don't think so whether this is the right place for the engineering level because they are focused the students more focusing on their career passion and after that they are looking for their jobs after getting job they are going for their family. So I don't think so this is the right place at the engineering level why don't we focus more on the lower level. For example, at the fifth standards, tenth standard, so they'll get more awareness on that. Uh, so they'll carry forward that awareness in the engineering level. So what you're saying is fabulous because you can only say it after having taught it for almost a decade now. Okay. So the community at large of the teachers, the community of teachers, will have to come to some kind of a consensus, and then we can actually approach the UGC or you know whoever is uh, uh, committed to taking this forward, we actually have a voice in which we can say look this is where it should really work or this is where it might work better. So the point is well taken, how to position this course, where to position this course could very well be an outcome of this particular forum. My question is when I go to the classroom to teach this environmental studies at the engineering level, I do not know how to start and where to start. So people are uh, looking at me what the professor is going to teach, at what level we are going to start. We do not have a proper setup that where to start. So when we say this environmental studies, they are thinking something is like a uh, social kind of uh, lectures. They are not attracted at all. So that is the biggest problem for the teacher. So let me just say it sure. very, let How me say, to let me say it very, uh, very straight, okay. The teacher would have to be the attraction. That's why the work that we need to do contextually. If you had a choice, would you teach this course and would you pay to teach this course? I mean, you really need to get that sorted out. And you know, as we go through this course, what you will find is most of us are teaching this course as an expression of a love for this particular subject. So the attraction and you know it does not have to be in the classroom, it could be in the corridor, it could be in the canteen, it could be on the playground, it does not matter because who begin to people, you know young people anyway in the you know age group of 18 to 22, you know that is the age group, they are always looking for mentors, they are always looking, uh, looking up at people who would inspire them and I think we need to reconstitute ourselves and uh, no amount of material, no amount of resources, no amount of content is going to be able to shift the inspiration that only you can provide. So I'm actually inviting you to uh, do the workout required to have the stamina and the muscles to be able to touch upon that question. Okay, so uh, I'm not answering your question. Okay, sir. Be careful, I'm not answering your question. I'm inviting you to a new paradigm in which all the, see, it's like this. Um, you asking me how to ride a bicycle. You and I know a lot of walking. To get onto the bicycle, you would have to actually get onto the bicycle. So this in some way is also an invitation to get onto the bicycle. What we will do is we will hold you from the back. We will not stop you from falling. You should fall. Gravity should do its work. But at the same time, we are there standing with you to see is there anything that we can provide that would actually fulfill on your commitment. And you know what? There is a selfish interest. If you win, I win. Okay? So I am not answering your question. I am inviting you to participate. We will see. We shall see. Okay? All right. Okay, sir, thank I just you. also want you to know that you are not the only person asking that question. There are many, many, many of us among the participants who have that question, who have that struggle who have that issue of what do I tell these people who are not interested in learning something which is a required course. In such a situation, what do I do? It's not your question alone. It's so 
please feel included in the larger group of teachers who have a similar concern. And we are hoping that by coming together, by sharing with each other, we will be able to provide something which otherwise, as an individual, is not available to us. OK? OK, so time to roll up our sleeves and do a pre-course quiz. OK? So there'll be some questions. There are about 12 questions. The possible responses to the questions are, you know the answer, so you can answer it. You're not sure, but you are making an intelligent guess. Then go ahead and say that I'm guessing, and then go ahead and make that intelligent guess. Or you have no idea, and you cannot even risk guessing it. Then just write IDNK, which means I do not know, as a response. Now I just want to give you the good news. The good news is that the more IDNKs, the more you will learn in this course. OK, that's the good news. So everybody should be ready now. Uh, I request the coordinators to please distribute A4 size blank sheets to everybody. Um, I'm going to now share a little bit about uh, two things. Um, one is there would be some content of the course. And there'd be some training aspects, okay? Where, so the normal content would be in normal font, but I'll try as far as possible the sharing of the method or the approach for teaching in red italics. Okay, so for example, this is my sharing with you of what I do in classes. So I definitely use the welcome, and I spend quite a bit on time of the six hours that I only have. I spend a good half an hour, 45 minutes on setting up the relationship. And then, in the first lecture itself, I give a pre-course feedback or a pre-course quiz, which in some way has people begin to set up the expectations for the particular module, and also for a, you know, providing a context so that people can actually see the value that you're going to get out of it. So this makes a difference for students. If they came in without any expectations, then in some sense, these questions are setting up the promise of the course. They're saying, what is it that they will have learned by the end of this course? In some sense, a lot of times nowadays, when you're looking at learning methodologies, et cetera, this, this is something that we also refer to as the learning objectives. So what is the learning objective for this air quality module. And um, just again, to share with you, what is it that I do? And in, the, in the feedback, I also ask people which city they are from in India. And I also ask them if they have any air quality issues in their cities or in their towns. So some people come from lovely places like Kulu Manali and other lovely place, Darjeeling apparently is not so, Darjeeling apparently is now quite polluted. But there are places which are still untouched by pollution. And if you have one of those places, let me know. I'd like to come and visit you personally on a vacation. But most of the places, there are pollution problems. But if some student says, look, in my city or in my town, there is no pollution problem, then I tell them to inherit Mumbai or Delhi, or any of the urban cities, urban centers as one of their home cities, uh, that they can be responsible for. So the context for the entire air quality module, the teaching, is the student develops an understanding of steps that are required to manage air quality in his or her hometown. So actually, I give them this exercise in which I say, you are the collector of the city. You are the collector for the district. And there are pollution problems. What are the things that you need to know so that you can take care of health of the people in your district? So that's the relationship I set up with them. And then all my lectures are delivered as though they were being delivered to the person who's accountable for air quality in their district. It's not about passing an exam. It's not about making it through the course. It's actually looking at them, having them look to see what is it that they would need if they were in charge. So I'm inviting you, that, you know, to see if this 
or any other expression which you think is inspiring for you to actually use it, use as a context, to develop that context and use it for the course. During my six hour lectures, I actually give them two assignments. So my part in the 100 mark question is about 34%. I give two homeworks of 7% each and a final exam of 20%. So these home assignments are not the usual home assignments. I actually give them in three, the first homework I give them in three parts. So the homework one, part A, is they have to study a film. And this film is called An Inconvenient Truth. Uh, it is by algorithms on global warming. And I give them a deadline, which is maybe three days on the day of the announcement in the class. So they have to finish it by a certain deadline. And on that particular day, which is my next lecture, or the, you know, after two days or so, I give them the next part of the assignment. By the way, they're not supposed to just see the movie, OK? They're not seeing the movie with popcorn and Pepsi. They're actually studying the movie. Um, and then after that, I give them the next part of the homework, which is there's another movie on global warming. And this movie is actually quite the contrast of this previous movie. OK, this movie, what it says is a source of global warming. And this movie, what it says is a, global warm, is a source of global warming, completely diametrically opposite viewpoints. So by the time they have seen this first movie, they are pretty convinced that it is anthropogenic, it is man-made. Global warming is being caused by human development. Whereas by the time they see this movie, they are not sure anymore. They are not too sure whether this movie was correct or this movie is correct which is what opens up the real part of the homework, which is part C, where I ask them to write a critique. You know, so you know the two movies, and then there's a critique. So they write like a thousand word essay. And I'm not going to spend time on that now. I'll just send it to you as a uploaded on Moodle, and maybe we can discuss it in the next lecture. OK, um, there are some other assignments which we will deal with later. OK, so I'm going to stop here now. All right, so it's 12.30. We should close now for lunch.